Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. This one just came in from Ronaldo Lopez. Hey Chris, just wanted to ask you a simple question. Recently I bought a PCI 5 port USB 2.0 card for my computer in order to expand the amount of USB 2.0 connections to my computer. The problem is that it is advertised that USB 2.0 should have speeds up to 480 megabits per second, but when I try to transfer files from my computer to my external hard drive, it only gives me about 84 megabits per second. Is the PCI card broken, or is there any limitations as to the speed the device is able to achieve? Thanks, and by the way, great show. Well, 84 megabits is kind of low. Mm. It is like, low, uh, but there's an overhead no, that like people don't realize with USB that right. isn't inherent with FireWire or, let's say, Ethernet. Well, it's because USB is designed to support up to 128 devices at once. Yeah. And it's, basically, you have that four... What was that? You're, you, you, you broke up there. Say that again. Oh, sorry. Um, USB is designed to support a large number of devices, and, and you can only get that maximum throughput to a certain point. Um, with my external USB drives, I usually get somewhere between 20 and 25 megabytes per second, which is about 160 megabits or more. So about double what he's getting, but as far as getting the 480 megabits that they advertise, that's pretty much pushing the limit of your hard drive there. So he's course, doing... I get, I get about those speeds over my gigabit LAN, so... It shouldn't be that hard to get them over USB. It's just I've never been able to. Hmm. Well, it, it, I, the only other thing I'd uh, I'd recommend checking is is check the CP, CPU. I can only imagine is just going through the roof. If you know if that it's external, well, it's it's all about your hardware too. Right. You know, RAM, the amount of RAM. Sure. Well, so, I don't know if USB is so much RAM intensive as I know it's uh, it could be CPU intensive. I mean, there's some amount of well, overhead. You, there's a couple of other things you can try. Mostly, uh, it might have anything to do with like uh, the buffer size, how big of a block you're trying to read and write at a time. Because yeah. the blocks are too small, you're going to be doing more operations, and there's going to be times when the USB is waiting for the drive to fetch the next small chunk or whatever. So that may be something else for him to check. On how FreeBSD is organized. But anyway. The uh, anyway. um well well you know the thing I would recommend is checking to see. If that external hard drive has a FireWire option, well, I, I'm guessing it doesn't have Ethernet. But if it has a FireWire option, I I would typically recommend using FireWire to yeah. transfer data back or, and forth. Especially if it's a hard drive, newer ones have uh, eSATA, which yeah. is the same type of connector they use internally, and it's going it's going to be the fastest way to connect a hard drive because it's how you would connect your hard drive if it was inside your computer. Yeah, I'd recommend eSATA, then FireWire, then USB. Well, actually. Probably go Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet before I did that. Gigabit but. Ethernet, then USB, then 100 megabit Ethernet. Yeah. I mean, r right now I'm transferring uh, an ISO, a Linux ISO. It's about 4 gig. It's going 31.5 megabit a second. So. You mean megabytes? Megabytes. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Now, so that's, multiple you know, eight there makes a big difference. Another yeah, thing that might be interesting for this guy to track inside of, and again, I'm in Windows Vista here, in the computer management console, which you can get by right-clicking my computer or computer and selecting manage, mm -hmm. in the device manager specifically, however you get to the device manager, under the universal serial bus controllers, and universal serial bus is exactly what USB yes. is short for. Right. look at, uh, like, yeah, just bandwidth. Exactly. I was going to say click on, double-click on, because the, the default action should be opening up its property sheet. Double click on a generic USB hub or a hub and then flip either over to the advanced tab or the power tab and you can find out the power that's required and if you are giving that much power directly to the device. This one, at least again, this is the Vista property sheet. It tells me that this hub that I just clicked on is self-powered and the total power available. So as long as he's getting enough power to that particular device, then he'll be okay. There's also an interesting thing. There's another tab, again, in Vista, Advanced. It says Hub is operating at high speed. So that means that it's definitely not, it's definitely at USB 2.0 speeds versus 1.1. Now they're even talking about USB 3.0 right around the corner. Now I don't know how that's going to compare to 1.1 
and 2.0 necessarily. Like, uh, on uh, XP, I'm under the advanced tab, and I can see right here it says that system reserve has 23% of the available bandwidth, which means 110 megabits right off the top is reserved for communicating with the devices yep. passively with the yep. operating system. So that's the overhead. Plug stuff in and, and unplug stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, that USB is great for its uh, universal universality. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it's it's I, and I think that it's good enough. Honestly, I've never really had yes. an issue with USB. Um, you know, not like I've had painful moments when I in, in which case I've recommended using the at least on Windows. There's a free utility called USB D View, and I've talked about it on videos before. But the great thing about it is is that it can help you troubleshoot through uh, USB problems that you you may have been having. Uh, may or may not have been having. It's a great USB manager that doesn't come built in with Windows, which is kind of a, a disappointment to a certain degree. Have you guys tried the wireless USB yet? I, I know that the devices are just now coming out, but pretty soon no, you'll be I able haven't. to... That yeah, That's going to be nice. Seen any devices that you see that either. That's just going to be so nice. Having more wireless devices. On a, on Extreme Tech, they're talking but about... Another a program that this the user might want to try is there's one called... Uh, Copy handler. Copy and handler. So I can barely hear it you. It lets you do things like change the block size. Yeah, it lets you change the block size. Um, set a, uh, a bandwidth limit. Like if you only want to use. Part it, it, of your bandwidth here, to speak kind up. Of you're kind of you. you're kind of low, Alan. Am I low? Or yeah, you're really low. Yeah, so copy handler lets you um, uh, change the block size, which can make a big difference, especially if you're copying from one drive to another drive or from two partitions on the same drive. Uh, it lets you pause and resume, and it lets you uh, set a bandwidth limit if you want to, say, copy something over your network while only using part of your network, like especially if you have wireless or something that's only like 11 megabits, and you want to, you're using your internet or whatever, and you don't want to, you only want to use half of the 11 megabits or whatever. Oh, wow. Oh, this but is really, great. Uh, the ability to pause and resume a, a file copy or move is quite useful. Oh, this is great. This looks is uh, open source. Mm -hmm. and it has really good integration with the Windows shell too. Yeah, it's it's Windows utility. I see screenshots for XP, so I don't know if it'll work with Vista necessarily. Wow. I don't know either. I've never tried. This is great. Vista. Yeah. Kind of very handy. Oh, this is sweet. Uh, Especially if I, when you're moving large amounts of files. Oh, this stuff. is this should be the only way people copy. Wow. Great recommendation. Yeah, this is great. Copy Handler. Copy Handler. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Cop CopyHandler.com. I do. I yeah, am curious to know. Copy is okay, but it it's not quite as good. It doesn't let you have like a queue and stuff like Copy Handler does. I wonder though. That's the I, other thing is you can have you it, it builds a queue. So if you tell it, you can tell it to copy this file here, that file over there, and that one over there, and it'll only do like one drive at a time. Like it, it'll run two at the same time, if they won't interfere with each other. But if they will, and it, and it, uh, it lets you like queue up the. Um, do you want to overwrite prompts to the end? So if you if you walk away, it keeps doing the files that it can copy in the meantime. So wow. That you don't you know? Two minutes into the uh, uh, two hour copy, it asks if you want to overwrite one file. You know the UI so isn't great. Either. The UI doesn't look fantastic, but uh, this is this is like the power toy to end all power toys. This is amazing. Especially if you have you know like six hard drives and like you're dealing with the 1.6 terabytes of files all the time. Wow, this is awesome. This is great. That that was a great recommendation, Alan. I found it by accident. You did really. Yes, well, I was using Total Copy, which is another similar program that's sure. a lot lighter. Yeah. And, uh... Wow. I was telling somebody about it, and they couldn't find it, and they ended up finding that instead. <laughs> and they showed me, and I was like, well, that's actually better. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love when the community just steps forward and finds something better than what you were using before. It's the only way it works. <laughs>